Y'all respect the one who got shot. I respect the shooter. It is now 2024. It is our first episode of Designated Report Behind the Lens. And I'm so excited that we were finally able to make this happen. Um, I'm here with the uber talented, always on the move, um, Georgia Soares. How are you? How are you feeling? Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. <laughs> Are we trying Absolutely. to do this? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, moving around my schedules. But I'm good. I'm good. Um, where are you currently? I'm back home in Philly right now. Uh, from it's Phil- are you from where, Philly? So, yeah. That's nothing. That's, I can't go anywhere right now because there's like a snowstorm happening. So yeah. Kind of <laughs> for a little bit. How long have you been in Philly? Uh, Philly, Philly for two years, but I live like around Philly, like in the suburbs. It's been like seven years okay. all together. So, yeah. Okay. I think I saw recently that you moved, you moved to United States in like 2016, 2015. Yes. 2016. Yeah. Okay. What, what prompted the move? How did you, how did you make the move? Um, so I came to the US as like an au pair. I don't know if I've ever heard of this program. Uh, basically, you just like come to work for like a family and like take care of their kids. Uh, at the same okay. time, you go to like uh, school, but you don't have a lot of time to do that. So I came as an au pair and I had the opportunity to end up staying after to go to college again. So okay. that's what I'm doing right now. So yeah. So you're in college now or you, when you got up here, you started college? No, after like, I feel like three years, I went back to college. So I'm almost done again. Okay. Uh, Degree in what? We're now marketing and I have a minor in photography. Okay. And that was kind of my next question. If you were doing something in photography, uh, it's a funny story actually, because when I apply in chain and for, apply for my uh, my bachelor here. I was not doing photography at all. I was just doing as a, like a hobby. So I was more sure. taking photos of my friends and like messing around. But I have a degree in international relations uh, from Brazil, oh. and I used to work in marketing back there. So when I was trying to pick something that was similar to what I was doing, because I always love marketing, so I was like, okay, let me do marketing, but. I also like photography. Why don't I like try to like some classes here and there just to see Mm -hmm. how I feel. Um, But by the time I started school, I was still not doing anything sports related. I was still trying to just like go with marketing and trying to learn uh, whatever photography I was about to learning. And if it was like one year in, I started doing sports photography. Wow. Yeah. So it hasn't even been that long that you've been doing this, huh? No. Like for That's sports crazy. in general, I start in 2020 uh, during COVID. I had a, f- a friend of mine, she was a photographer, Andrea. Uh, she was doing, and she like kind of mentioned, because I play sports my whole life and I love photography, but I was not happy doing just like portraits or weddings and all of sure. that. Um, the thing, and she kind of mentioned to me, like, why don't you try uh, sports? Like you love sports, you watch sports, so maybe you should give a go. And that's how I went uh, went on about it, and I tried to like do it. And actually, my first game doing uh, sports photography was a Philadelphia Union game. It was like a final for like the, the shield. It was like this uh, yeah. the shield. It was like they're competing. It was like my first game. Never shot for, uh, sports ever, and I was there like trying to like show something. And I absolutely <laughs> love it. Yeah, I love it. It was like so fun, and I was like so excited. And it was during COVID. So like the photographer photographers were like on the stands. So we're not even yep. that close. They had the whole like yep. uh, distance thing, but I absolutely love it. So that first, that first game that you shot, two questions. One, do you like the pictures that you took mm-hmm. from, from that particular event? And two, um, 
how did that I know you said that you played sports and you know it, it was kind of just a marriage of the two things um mm -hmm. shooting during COVID did that give you a different perspective on like sports photography at all absolutely because I had no idea how a uh, photographer like sports photographer like work and I used to like see them when I went to like games but I have no mm -hmm. idea how hard it was until I was yes. doing it. Because <laughs> if you didn't have like good equipment, you're not going to be able to take good pictures because we are so yes. far from the field because of COVID. So that gave me a different perspective of like, oh, okay, you, you need to be good to do what you're doing, but also you need good equipment to like try and make this thing happening. And I like the photos back when I took it, but yes, yeah. uh, last year I was going through uh, my photos uh, from the early years, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> this is absolute trash. This is just, just <laughs> like I, there's one or two that's like good, but like I didn't know about any settings. I didn't know anything. I was just going like kind of like a blind. I like talked to a few people. They kind of like try to help me navigate that the first game. Sure. I was able to take some like action photos and like some celebration that I like it, but like overall, like looking at the picture, I was like, I don't know what I was doing here, but that's like it's a <laughs> like the good lex lesson for you to go back and see how far you have come. Yeah, but yeah, yes, for sure. And that kind of leads me right into my next question. Um, I learned of you in like towards the end of 2022, and um, just visually stunning i just loved everything that you were doing and to me i feel like i can see a picture on twitter or on instagram and like immediately know that it's one of your photos and in a very short amount of time that i've been watching you at least i've seen like tremendous growth like even in the year and a half or whatever that it's been um and to me, and I'll, I'll definitely let you chime in on it. To me, I feel like you've, you're very good at capturing the moment. And mm -hmm. by that, I mean, like, sure, like the game action, peak action, celebrations, things like that. But it's just whatever's happening in that moment, crowd reactions, mm -hmm. whatever's happening in that moment, I feel like you capture it so beautifully. Um, do you think that you have a particular style or is there a way that you, mm -hmm. you know, the way that you capture images, do you see yourself in a certain light? I feel like now after a, a little while, I can see that. I feel like learning and seeing the game for so long, I've learned how and when to shoot sometimes, but also I feel mm. like it depends on the game always depends on the game, the feeling, Absolutely. the vibe of the game. I feel like that also always contributes for you to take good pictures. But I feel like, I, I, yeah, I've looked at my pictures and I'll be like, I can see like some growth and some moments that I'm like, okay, I, I know I can see myself why I'm doing, I'm shooting the way I'm shooting. More like, uh, yep. it's kind of like hard. Like, I have like moments. I have like games. I'm like, oh, I, I just take one good picture. Like I, I, I yes. hate everything. Like everything sucked, <laughs> nothing like worked. And then I had that games that things happen and like you get look at that everything is like right there in front of you. Uh, yes. I feel like 2022 was a year that really helped me, but also challenged me the most because after I took the picture of Christian Press and it was a very good action picture, I was trying to like simulate the same picture trying to gotcha. get a lot of actions, trying to get a lot of goals and nothing was working because that moment specific, specific was a very look moment that was in the right position, everything worked. But yes. you're not always going to get that. And I feel like that year I learned how like make the best of situations. Like, okay, you're not going to get a goal, but get a celebration. Maybe get the fans. Yes. The other yes. things that's happening at the same time, there's also as value as getting a good shot on goal. So I yes. feel like that year really helped me going to uh, 2023, like see games differently because of that picture. Because like, I started getting very frustrated, like some games that I could not get like a good shot on goal. I could not get like some really good action pictures because everything that I was taking pictures of, I was comparing to that photo. And I actually like get out of my head that I'm not gonna take the same photo again because that's one yes. 
or oh, that's one moment, but I can do better than that. So I just have to try to like change my my vision and change the way I see the game. It's just not goals. That's some that's so much yes. so much more going on. So yeah. Yeah. And I I love I love when I talk to photographers and they kind of echo the same thing in different ways because a lot of times, especially starting out, I feel like there's this pressure that you have to get every shot. You have to get every moment, every celebration. Um, but the fact of the matter is like, even you on your best day, you might, there might be a photo that's out of focus or something like that. And it's like, you know, it, it happens, you know? <laughs> um, so to hear somebody like you, who's so accomplished, so young, it's just like, you know, it, it happens to the best of us. And like you said, that 2020 just kind of shifting your, your perception of like, Hey, you know, I'm not going to get every goal. I, I I've come to grips with that. I'm not going to get everyone, but there are things that I can get. And, you know, for lack of a better word or a better phrase, making the best of the situation. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's uh, something that you always have to like work, work with because you never know what's going to happen during the game. Um, uh, mm -hmm so many things can go wrong and maybe go right that I just feel like you got to just, just shift like this, the, your vision and then whatever you're doing and just go with. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been, you've been going with it. And I, I <laughs> like I said, I, I love everything that you've been doing. Yeah. Um, so when I scroll through your social media, um, I know I do see some men's soccer. I think I saw some NBA, the, the 76ers, but primarily it is women's soccer. Is that um, a conscious decision? Is that something that you intend to do? Or is it just that's where your opportunities are right now? So when I started like my journey of like shooting games, I always had it like the back of my head that I always wanted to work with like women's sports. Uh, I didn't know exactly how, where that would like take me, but I always wanted to like prioritize shooting games, women's games, that being sure. basketball, that being soccer, that being whatever. But then after like taking that photo of Christian Press and like doing more uh, in the best games, that's where more opportunities start coming, coming from. So... Mm -hmm. I just, I love like helping in women's sports. I feel like that's what I always wanted to do. So I'm just really glad that I have the opportunity to keep you doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think that having quality images, quality, quality videos and social media presence in general is going and will continue to go a long way in helping the build women's sports, whether it's soccer, basketball, softball, whatever the case is. Um, Cause there is definitely a stigma of just like, you know, it's not the women's games aren't as good as the men's games, which simply isn't true. It's not fact at all. Um, mm -hmm. So by, and this is my opinion, um, you know, I just feel like when we are able to capture these women, capture their stories, tell their stories, it just goes a long way towards not e not just the game in the moment, but, you know, like laying the foundations as we continue to build the women's sports. I feel especially also as like a photographer, like a woman in this uh, sports is very like, in this area of like photography that's very man dominate i feel Absolutely. that like it's changing a lot i feel like 2023 i saw so many like women starting shooting games and i've seen way more than i've seen before because it would be so male dominant and i feel like that also helps i feel like even like players feel more like comfortable in the zones of having like a female photographer there uh, yeah. shooting those moments yeah. and i yeah. had like opportunities of like being with players and they appreciate it because they feel more comfortable with you, you being a woman and you, you can talk to you and open up about like all our, whatever photos. And sometimes they even like, Oh, let me see, let me see. Cause I feel like that also helps a lot. And even like helping like young generation and have helping like a uh, new girls that wanted to be photographers and seeing other women's photographers yes. 
uh, trying to succeed in this area and see like, oh, there's women that, that they're successful as well, not just men. So yeah, I feel like it's very accomplished. It's a very accomplished accomplishment uh, being able to do that and like helping whatever way I can help. So yeah, absolutely. In terms of women photographers, have you had anybody like reach out to you or have, not necessarily tutor, but like, are there young photographers at these games where you're like, hey, you know, maybe you want to try this or, you know, maybe you want to be in this location. Is there anybody that you've come across in, in that light? I've been lucky enough that every like single woman photographer that I cross paths with have been so nice and helpful. And we're always like rooting, like rooting for each other and helping like in any way we can. Uh, I feel like even like going to the World Cup and like meeting other female photographers there as well and like creating this network has been so, so nice, so nice because I have crossed paths with some like male photographers that were just absolute not nice at all. Yeah. And yeah. they always like think very highly of themselves. And meanwhile, like with a woman, never had any problem. I crossed like really like amazing photographers that work for like really big, like be the outlets and they are just always willing and helpful in any way they can yeah. because I feel like they know how hard it is. Uh, but I had one, just like a young girl, like she's in high school, reach out uh, for me, like trying to help her. And like, I gave her, her my best advice and I always check on her to see how she's doing and That's seeing awesome. if she's like accomplishing me, uh, anything that she wants, she wants to do it. Uh, she's actually from Australia and she's living in U.S. She's going to high school. So it's been nice because I know when I started, I was like bugging all my friends that I knew was like starting to. I was like, please just help me. How would I do this, this and that? Yeah. And I know how much that helped me. And if it wasn't for people in the beginning trying to help me and like giving all the knowledge that they had, I was not going to be here. So I try to like pass this along as much as possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, paying it forward is exactly. a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I know I know when um when I originally reached out to you, I I told you I was nervous just because of again, just all that you've accomplished <laughs> and uh I know you're busy and the whole nine and um you know, you were kind of like, "No, like in order to help grow the game, like we have to talk about it." And um I just love that perspective and what you're saying about, you know, this young high schooler from Australia here in the States now. And it's like, yeah, you know, it, it I, I'm sure you can't give her all your time, but you know, you check in every once in a while or, you know, and it, it just goes a long way. Yeah. If it's like, if it's something I can help with, I would always try to help and I always try to do my best and give whatever that is need. I'm not responsible for like media credentials or like putting photographers yes. in the, <laughs> for like teams. And I have like people like DMing me that I'm like, look, I cannot help with that. But like, if there's anything else I need help and then like, I can try, but like, that is not my alley. Yeah. That's not to do what I do, but like, I'll help any way I can. Yes. Yes. Um, what are you shooting with? camera brand wise so right now i have three cameras all canon i only shoot canon uh that's what i started that was my first camera like that's what i, when I was doing brazil like that was like a, a canon uh rebel to three e or something like that mm -hmm. that was my camera for like years um but right now i have uh, canon r3 which is the main for like sports photography yep. and then i have i'm going like all mirrorless now i to try yeah. to shift i still have like a a big one the canon uh mark to one gx i still have that one and it's like my dirty body because i'm trying to change everything to mirrorless yes. but yeah so those are my main my main cameras and for soccer games considering just how big the pitch is um <laughs> I assume you're using a 300, 400 for, you know, when they're in the middle and uh, for like celebrations and things like that. What lens are you using for those? So I have a 300. Or if they're a little bit closer. For, yeah, 300. And for the longest time, I was like, no, I need a 400. I need a 400. And I realized that 
my best pictures have been for the 300. I don't need a 400 for the things I'm shooting and what I'm trying to sure. shoot. So that's been like helpful because the 400 is so expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do. A, I use a 300 and the main 70 200. Uh, but okay. 300 is being my like probably go to because sometimes because since I'm normally not the main shooter uh, when I'm shooting those game, I'm normally second uh, photographer. I tend to be normally opposite side of the main photographer, so I'm kind of a little far. So the 300 is the one that I can like shoot all the time. And then when I'm closer for like celebrations after game and stuff like that, then I change for uh, mm -hmm. lens and like clothes. Gotcha. So you mentioned being the, the second shooter, part mm -hmm. of my ignorance, but what does that mean um, when you're the, the secondary shooter or the second shooter? So normally like working, um, working with the teams, every single team has already a main photographer that's their go-to. And they know mm -hmm. that the normally photographer is the one that's like shooting the attacking side. And so normally okay. I'm the second one. So normally I'm going to shoot or the defense side or the opposite side of the attacking. So then I gotcha. normally on the field. I'm like outside of the field on the other side. Because then it can okay. have like both sides of celebration. And when I'm on defense too, my 300 can get just a celebration. Normally I don't try yeah. to like shoot the the goal because it's the back of the players. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. So are you working, do you work for the individual teams or are you working for the league or how do, how does that work? It's kind of both. It also depends uh, on their schedule, what they're doing. I've been, I, uh, last season, I work a lot of Gotten. So most of Gotten's uh, home game, I was shooting for Gotten. Mm -hmm. And then I shot some games for Washington Spirits. And then I work with the league. I work with it in the, in the Basel for other games, for like the Challenge okay. Cup uh, finals. And then for the same finals, I was shooting with uh, the in the Basel show. Okay. Okay. So you're doing a little bit of everything. That's awesome, yeah. though. Um, again, I'm sure, I'm sure it allows for a lot of flexibility as well as just like opportunities, whether mm -hmm. you're shooting, you know, directly for Gotham FC or, you know, for the league, do you, are you able to, when you're, when you're shooting for the league, does that allow you to travel, uh, elsewhere? Or are you mainly like the East coast? So when they need it, they, they send like photographers ever, everywhere. But because I was shooting Gotten last season so much, uh, when Gotten started going through like part of finals, uh, semifinals, and always like on the West side, they end up yep. like sending me because I had a great relationship with the players because I've been around these players for so long. So it yes. would be easier for them to have someone that they trust with these players, know these players to do that. So then for gotcha. the quarterfinals, they always, like, for the really big games, they, the league itself normally has more than, like, one photographer, which is good because normally when you're shooting, you're the only photographer shooting a game, you have to do both teams and gets, like, very, like, hard to, like, shoot everything that they sometimes need to. Yeah. So for, like, quarterfinals, the finals, and finals, uh, there's more people. So then you can focus on only one team. So for, gotcha. let's say, for the, my, my quarterfinals, which was gotten against Portland, uh, the Nebasel already had like a photographer for Portland, the new Portland that I was shooting all the games for Portland, and I was in, uh, just for gotten. So then I could just focus on gotten players, got celebration gotcha. and whatever was happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. You have a great, a great thing going with uh with the soccer so i love it so much um there is something so you mentioned um you, i know you're in philly you did a lot of work with got gotham fc um and again i was looking through your instagram and i i just realized this like a couple weeks ago um you shot the wnba draft last year and um I was there. I was shooting too. And we have a very huh. similar picture. And I was like, she was right there. And I didn't even notice. So funny. So, 
yeah so it's just like very small world but i'm like geez yeah. i wish i would have i wish i would have known <laughs> yeah so funny um have you done anything else with the WNBA? So because of the scheduling with the NWSL is very conflicting with the NWB, the WNBA is so hard because normally the Liberty games are the same day as Gotham's game. And really? work with Gotham, I have to be there so much early to shoot the games. So then I I didn't have to I can't have time to like go to the Liberty games and then rush to like gotcha. Gotham's because of the scheduling but hopefully yeah. i heard home rumors that is here they're trying to like schedule the games for saturdays for the in so then hopefully i'll be able to do some more wnbas because i has i haven't shot like since last year at all like nothing because of the scheduling yeah yeah i know um so the Liberty were in the finals last year, and I, I only was able to get to one of the games. Uh, I think it was a Saturday or something like that. But it was the same day as Ali Krieger's last right. game. Yes. Yeah. And um, I was pissed. I was pissed I couldn't go. I, I, I wanted yeah. to get to that game as well and just couldn't. But yeah. um yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize just how much the um, the the two schedules conflicted. I feel like I I feel like uh, Liberty and Gotham is the only like two teams that have like games every like time at the same day. Other teams don't <laughs> normally have the same conf conflict, but those two yeah. have like all the time. I'm like, what is happening? Just change. Like I want to do both, but like I can't. Exactly. <laughs> um. So again. And we're going to get into the World Cup in a little bit, but so accomplished in in a very short amount of time. Um, what's what's something that motivates you to get out of bed each day, um, considering all the things that you've you've accomplished so far? What what's your driving force right now to just go out there and continue to get better? I feel like the word is just get better. I feel like. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, oh, I haven't done much this year, which is crazy to think about it. But like, that's how my brain sometimes work. And I'm like, oh, maybe I can do better this year. And like trying to like see what I've been trying to do uh, is looking back at pictures and looking back at my games and see like, oh, okay, this game, I could have done this part a little better. Oh, okay, this game, maybe I didn't show up this much on this thing that I wanted to shoot. So just trying to like, Edu educate i would say just studying myself uh what i'm doing what i'm shooting and what can i do better or different for the upcoming year or for the upcoming games or anything like that but it's just like the motivation of getting better and getting better photos and i don't know just that like drive and like that desire to just do better is there any is there ever a point in time where you feel like you're almost I, where you're like stagnant. I know you, you mentioned earlier where it's like, sometimes you'll go into a game or like after a game, and you'll be like, I don't like any photo that I took today. I just, just for whatever reason, I, I didn't get anything that I liked. Mm -hmm. um, is there ever a time where it's like two, three games in a row where it's like, man, I'm really not getting like the results that I'm looking for. And if so, if you have ever been in like that type of situation, what do you do to get yourself out of it? It's so hard because I've been there like a couple of times. I won't say it's like very consecutive, like consecutive, like games where I'm like shooting not good stuff. It's just more, I don't think I have good stuff. It's sure. just like, I'm not on the level that I want it to be somehow, or like the photos don't hit me the way they're supposed to. Sure. And it's just more like mentally myself, like thinking that and then people like saying, oh, you didn't do like a job or stuff like that. So it's just more trying to like, I when normally when I'm like that, I just try to not think about like photos or photography or try to like take my mind out of things, not think about the games or just occupy myself with something else or like do something that I like to do or like that does involve sports or does involve photos and not just sure. on the same loop of like, I could have done better. I could have done this different. Like just trying to let it go. And like when I pick up my camera again for the next game, you start fresh. 
don't think why it's like your mistakes or why your expectations for this game. It's just like seeing everything new and just go with the flow. Because I've been on this loop of like, oh, this sucks. This is not a good game. And like not wanting to edit my photos and stuff like that. And that's very like, you just get like, you don't, the motivation goes down and like, there's nothing you yeah. can do. So just trying to be positive when even like you cannot be positive, but like just trying to like take yourself out of the situation and just see from like, okay, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do now. If I keep like cruciating myself because of this, I'm not going to get anywhere because then the next game, I'm going to just be in my head. Like I have to do this better, yes. better, better, better. And I'm not going to yes. do it. Yes. I love that. I love that advice. Um, yeah, I love that advice because I've definitely been there sometimes and I'll look back and just be like, huh, you know, like, are they bad pictures? Not necessarily, but it's just like, like you said, it's for whatever reason, it's not hitting me the way that I want it to. And um, from there, like you said, just kind of take a step back, you know, put the camera down for a couple of days for a week and, you know, just kind of reset and come back to it. But I, I love I love your perspective on on the reset i feel like especially photography is so it's so hard because sometimes you see like people's work and you start comparing a work of other people's yes. work it's always the same loop of like social media and like everyone that goes through the same thing like oh this is such a good picture like why can i do something like that it's just not the way you should like you do some sometimes so something different that the person is not going to shoot the same way you do it yes. but, like that same like it's just you putting yourself down for no reason and there's like no like you just gotta like Take yourself off and start again. Yeah. Speaking of social media, what are you, what are your thoughts on Instagram specifically? Just because that's supposed to be the photo sharing um, app. Um, do you love social media? Do you hate it? Is it a love hate relationship? How do you feel about <laughs> social media? I've I, it's kind of hard because it's literally just like your visual portfolio right there for every single person to see like players yeah. companies whatever teams so is that like a is that kind of like a loop of liking not liking but like you gotta take what it is from instagram i can't complain much it's just more like what i can say not trying to compare your work with other people's work or not yeah. trying to simulate your work with other people's work. Just like do your thing and that's it. Like that's what I try to do. I have to get better at like adding pictures and post pictures because I've done games that I haven't posted. And I'm like, oh my God, it's been like almost six months. Should I do it? And like, I know I have to do it because in the end of the day, that's my portfolio for other people to see. And yes. it's just like taking the comparison and like not thinking other people's work is like, why you have to do it like your expectations you gotta should be the same thing as someone else like your work is your work and that's it yeah 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 i've i i enjoy instagram again specifically instagram um kind of for for the reasons that you're saying not so much to compare but to draw inspiration you know because there are just really super talented people all across the world and um i'm not necessarily looking to shoot like them but to like pull bits and pieces of what they're doing and incorporate it into what i'm doing you know and and mm -hmm. manipulate it and, and make it my own but um i think that's my biggest thing it's just like social media has made the world so small so you're able to yeah. uh you know connect with these different people and see what they're doing and you know um that's for me is like the you said, I that's for me is the positive sorry Kakaya, but for me that's no, the positive fine, side it's of instagram is like connecting with other creators and see what a creator is doing and sometimes even come up with like great ideas together of like maybe a game they're gonna do it oh you should like i don't know shoot like in black and white or something like that that's you know, like having this connection, I've met like great people through Instagram, great creators because of Instagram. So I can't mm -hmm. really complain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, again, I, I can definitely see where uh, people fall in the trap of like, 
here's my photo, but it's not as good as George's and they get discouraged and, you know, but um, I think if you, if you look at it the other way and it's like, Hey, like that's something that I truly like, you know, like how do, how do I frame my shot that way? Or how do I do this? And, you know, kind of incorporate it into what you're doing. So um, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so you've only been shooting sports professionally for a few years now. Uh, this will be the fourth year. Um, I know you mentioned earlier, uh, you've met a lot of women photographers and they're always so pleasant and and willing to help. Uh, the men can be hit or miss. Um, but generally speaking, have you noticed a shift within the industry um good or bad as it pertains to you specifically and then just women within the industry yes i feel like now i feel like more teams and even the league wants to work with women because we always have we always have been around there was like a lot of like women's photographers but they just didn't have the same uh chances or same opportunities sure. as the men um uh, I'm going to give an example of like doing the uh, Philadelphia Sixers games, 76 games. I can count on my fingers how many women I saw, I've seen like shooting uh, the NBA games. And that's like really? one or two. Always Jeez. men, always men, like for every single media outlet, for Getty, for AP, for Philadelphia, whatever. All of them are men. Always. Yeah. And I always like, it's so hard being on those like environments where you only see men because you feel like kind of an outsider. Sure. Because sure. they sometimes treat you like an outsider. Like they don't treat you at the same like level as like they would treat a man. And that's like kind of like hard like to deal with. So I'm like very glad that uh, for the in the sale, they're trying to like invest more in, in women, not only for players, but like women that like shoot videographers any woman that's like working with the sports itself so it's been like a different environment and i feel like it's still growing there's a lot of way to still go but there's a total shift from what i've experienced like shooting a basketball game for example gotcha gotcha um so let me ask you this because again we're, we're kind of touching on um the women in in photography and in the in the industry um mm-hmm. do you have any photographers uh women photographers men photographers um that you look at their work for um or that you're inspired by by their work yes there's like a i can like there's so many <laughs> i can like spend like a whole day talking about it uh, but yeah, and especially like, I feel like I tend to follow a lot of like photographers outside of like soccer, uh, because I like to see the work. I like to see what they're doing. And I one day wanted to like shoot as well outside, outside of just soccer. So like Chantel, uh, is the Charlotte, uh, the Panthers photographer and she works sometimes with the NWSL and she does like an amazing job. Like all itself, like She's I'm like great. A really, really, yeah, I'm like a really, really big fan of her. I had the pleasure of meeting her and work with her last year, and she's just like just amazing, like a very nice human being as well. But then you have like photographers even on the Nebisel, like Nikita, which is like the first one that like opened doors for so many uh, women's photographers to like be here. My friends like Andrea, that like normally shoot Orlando and Pride games, and you have like Emma chewing. Um, AC with ACFC. So that's so many of them that I can like keep like naming because I try to like give my support to everyone that like because I know how hard it is, especially for women. So I tend to like navigate to them because I know it's hard to be a woman on this um career. So yeah, that's that's a lot. There's a lot of people like I'm very fan of it and I try to like give my props because it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. It definitely is. Um, I do have a question that I meant to ask you earlier. If you don't mind, um, yeah, how old are you? 
<laughs> I'm 30 years old. 30. Oh, so you're still in your prime. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just um, again, I uh, I ask simply because um, it does feel at times that the industry is trending younger. Um, like you get a lot of these um a lot of these photographers videographers like in college and you know they get their opportunities at some of these games and um you know i'm 36 so like mm -hmm. i feel like i'm ancient compared to some of the you know some of the people that i've come across at some of these games and stuff but um just generally speaking i feel like it's a very i feel like it's an industry that is very supportive when you are around like the right group of people. Mm -hmm. um, you definitely get like some of the older photographers that like the gatekeep and they don't, you know, they're, they're the ones that make you kind of feel like an outsider. Um, but when you get like a good collection of, of friends and other photographers that you can lean on, I think it's a very like supportive community. Yes, I agree. I feel like if you find like the people that you like bond with and someone is going to like root for you and not like put you on the side, or, like look sideways, I feel like it's just like a great support system. Like you can have it. I feel like you got to yeah. find that and just stick with but I also feel it changed a lot. I feel like now there's way more young people, like college people, like coming. And yep. that's only happening because the game is going so much. And so that there's more opportunity for them to like trying to start early and navigating through that because it wasn't like that. Like I remember like doing my first like few games uh, with the Philadelphia Union. That was like almost no young, no young people there, like always like older people shooting the games. Yeah. Now, when like last year when I was doing uh, the games in the beginning of the year, there's so many college uh, young people there that I'm like, oh, this is nice because they're starting early. So they have yeah. the opportunity just early, which some people don't have that. So, yeah. Let me ask you this. I don't know if you, I don't know how active you are on, um, on Twitter specifically or X, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was a debate recently in the last week, week and oh. a half with regards to it, it kind of revolved around the national championship game. Mm -hmm. And, um, there was a kid, uh, I forget his name, but college kid, he got the opportunity to work and basically was just like, I didn't get paid for this, but it allowed me, it gave me this great experience. I was able to meet all these different people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there were just a lot of people on both sides of the fence that were like, yeah, that's great. Like, make sure you build on this. But then there was quite a few people that were just like, by you, not him specifically, but like people like him working free of charge, it hurts everybody else. Um, I, I would love to get your thoughts on that if you have any thoughts on that. I agree because in the beginning when I started uh, doing sport photography, I was also doing for free. I wasn't getting paid at all. And it's hard, right? Because you're taking money out of your pocket to pay for gas for you to like go to the game or yep. for parking. Sometimes you don't, some teams don't have parking, so you got to pay for parking. Yep. And then you have the investment that you put on your time, your equipment, everything else. So like, is that privileged situation for you to be in? where you can be like, no, I can take this not pay job because I have a support system of like parents or whatever that is going to back me up so I can do this. Meanwhile, other people don't have that. Sure. So they're never going to have the opportunity because you're taking that job for free. Like I understand is like, I done that in the beginning as well, because like you're starting, you wanted to create a portfolio, you wanted to create networking and those things price not going to pay, but also at the end of the day, is your job, is your work, is your time. Yep. And you gotta get paid. Even if it's like a small amount, you gotta get paid. It doesn't matter. You gotta get paid for the work that you put it out there. And photographer takes time, take money, take like energy. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um and just one follow up and we can kind of move on from that. But um 
how would you recommend for a, you know, whether it's a college student or somebody just starting out, um, how would you recommend them getting into um, paid gigs? You know, not necessarily, a, a you know, a national championship game, not necessarily Gotham FC or the Liberty or anything like that, but doing gigs that get you paid, how, how would you recommend somebody going about um, kind of getting their foot in the door and making sure that they are getting something for, for the work that they're mm -hmm. doing? It's so hard because like I, for college, especially for college, I feel like I don't know how college work in aspects here uh, with like paying students. Because I know like some people get paid, especially in college somehow when they're like covering the games for a school, not always. But I feel like it's a situation of like, I don't know, finding a middle ground, right? Like, okay, you guys cannot pay me this for this game, but maybe you can pay me somehow in a different form. Or find a way that they can get paid. Okay, can you not pay me for three games? Okay, so I'll do two games. You can, I will do three games. You pay me two. Like something that is gonna like be the middle ground of where you can like negotiate, but like you cannot yeah, do yeah. everything for. I feel like that you always sense. gotta find like, a balance, right? Like, because I feel like this like especially athletic like departments they always say they don't have money but they spend so much money doing anything else that i'm like they do yes. have money they just don't want to spend yeah. because someone is going to offer for free so you always yes. gotta like yes I'm, I'm absolutely with you on that um okay so we absolutely have to talk about the world cup uh last year 2023 uh you were you were like the aside from the players you were the star of the world cup i feel like um in New Zealand and in Australia um how was that experience how did you were you selected for it did you apply for it how did that come about and what was your experience out there so yeah so it was a kind of like last minute kind of thing um uh, literally like a less than one month uh to the work up starting um I received like a text from uh, Mag, which is the journalist that covers the national team, works for the Athletic, and Athletic was working with the State Farm to do uh, this partnership of bringing four uh, women to the World Cup that were never gonna be able to do it otherwise if they didn't have okay. the sponsorship. So they tried to select four journalists, and Mag wanted a photographer. Uh, to be there and be able to do that. And she had put my name on uh, when they're like discussing, discussing on the beginning of this project and this partnership that they didn't know if it was going to happen or not. And it was kind of approved last minute, like, literally like a month before. So then she, I got a text from her. I remember it was like a Friday. She got a text. Uh, Maggie was like, oh, can you send me your phone number? Because I have I put your name for this uh, job opportunity. And I was like, what? I was like, yeah, sure. And then I did. And then she followed up for like, oh, just so you know, it's about a World Cup. And I was like, wait, what? I was like, <laughs> what? So then after that, everything went very fast. I had like three calls on the same day, like after that attacks uh, with the Athletic, like telling me about how it was going to work. And if I, was, I have any interest in ongoing, because I'll have to drop everything. And in going, it was so last minute. If I could do that, and then um, Meg follow up, like, give me a call because I had no idea what was going on because it was everything so fast uh, because yeah. uh, their main officers in UK because of the time difference and all of that, they needed like everyone to have a response in like two days very fast because yeah, everything yeah. was like, moving in and they were like running out of time and going for like the applying for the visas and all of that. And then Maggie was like, oh, let me explain like slowly. And I was like, I feel like I'm hallucinating. I don't know what is happening <laughs> right now. I don't know. I'm going to process all this information right now. But yeah, I remember like leaving that call and just like calling, calling my mom. I'm like, okay, so I have this opportunity. Should I go? Should I not go? This is crazy. I didn't know what I'm going to do. Um, and my mom was no help whatsoever, but I already had that I was going. Like, I was like, there's no way I can say no to this. Like, this is yeah. like my dream come true. And it was like a dream. I was like slowly planning to happen like for the next workup. I was not even thinking about like starting in New Zealand. I was like, I'm working towards work up whatever the next one. 
We don't yeah. even know where he's going to be, but I was working through that. And then I had this opportunity, like right in front of me, I was like, how am I going to say no to this? It was like my dream come true. Yeah. So then I was like, of course, I say yes. And then everything from there was like, it's, it felt like a dream. I was like, I don't know what I was doing. I, I literally didn't tell <laughs> like almost anyone that was happening. And it was just living that like whole month before going in like a slow motion, like everything just trying to get there. <laughs> in my mind, I was like, once I'm there, everything's gonna like, it's gonna make it real. Like once I'm there, everything's yeah. gonna be real. No, it wasn't because I was there. I was like, this is not real. Like, I don't know what is this, like what is happening here? So it felt like a fever, like a fever dream for the whole time. Uh, yeah. Even when I was back, I was like, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> I just did this whole thing. I don't know what to do with myself. But it was like... Were you I, there for the duration? Yes. Like a month and like a week or something. The whole time. How did... I mean, there's a million games going on. How mm-hmm. um, how was it decided which games you were going to cover? Like, how did that work? So I was uh, based uh, whatever the U.S. was. So I was doing okay. every single game that the U.S. was going to do it. So all the other teams that were playing at the same time in New Zealand, in Auckland, I was doing those games too. But my main okay. uh, priority was to follow the U.S. So I was just following along. And then uh, we had discussions <laughs> after the U.S. Uh, before uh, the U.S. was eliminated that I was just going to keep following who they thought and they need cover because athletic cover, like all the teams like Spain, they had all the, like, they had like, uh, uh, journalists covering all their teams as well. So they're like trying to bet which, uh, one they need more coverage. So I ended up just staying in Sydney after Melbourne, I came back to Sydney and just ended up staying in Sydney until the end of the World Cup and just doing all the games that were happening in Sydney. Nice, nice. Um, incredible experience. I, I couldn't imagine. Um, what was your favorite, like, on pitch moment from from the World Cup? You mean like photo wise or just photo wise? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I love the photo I took um, from the Colombia player, the defender, Daniela. I don't want to burst her last name. Let me just Google <laughs> one second because. Um, okay, Danielle uh, Aria, Arias. I hope okay. I didn't say wrong, but yeah, it was like a celebration. I love that photo. Like it was on one of my like best photo. That's like a photo of Pino as well being silly, but like game wise, that uh, photo was just, it was like my, it's my favorite photo. Did you get any? Did you get any time to yourself while you were out there? Were you able to explore the city? Were you able to go out to dinner or anything like that? The amount of like walking I did, you have no idea. The, like <laughs> when you were in New Zealand, I walk everywhere. I was just walking too, because that's the only way I was gonna explore the city and like no places and doing that. So I was like hitting like twenty. 22 like thousand steps every single day because i was That's literally wild. walking <laughs> everywhere on that city so yeah we had like a little breaks between uh one game and the other uh but since i was like following the west i was doing a lot of like training and like press conference and all of that but auckland is small so we i had opportunity to like see a little bit of the city and like get around and like meet all the photographers and meet like my friends that were there as well covering the game so that was nice, but I I walk a lot, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> do you have Do you have a favorite moment outside of soccer that um, that you had? I feel like just be able to share the experience with other people there, especially for like uh, the state farmers, which is the other uh, three girls that were there as well with the athletic. Like we just be able to be with each other, like living the same experience like that helped a lot especially being away from home and like leaving this like drive of like 24 hours on stop of game and like coverage and like after like the game is done you're not done you have to cover this and go in there so like just meeting everyone and like being able to like even meet people that i i was following like on instagram for ages like all the creators 
I feel like those moments like just so special for you to like be there and like leave that yeah that's awesome that's awesome did um so i didn't realize i didn't i didn't realize that you were there for the us at least initially that was a heartbreaking game that i woke up very early to watch and was not thrilled with the results um were you around the team after after the loss um because of the World Cup, i we normally don't have access to the players like that um because uh, fifa is very uh specific with the rules and what players and photographers can do and not do mm -hmm. so i was not very around for that and then because the game was in uh, melbourne i literally um travel like in the morning six in the, in the morning i was back in sydney so I was not very around uh, gotcha. after that, but so yeah, I can really say. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, would you? I assume you would want to shoot another women's World Cup in a few years. Would you, if the opportunity arose, would you shoot the men's World Cup as well? Yeah, definitely. I I am trying to see if I can do the next one because gonna is gonna be here. Yeah, I'm trying to like work towards that show because I feel that that'll be my next step of doing. Since I already done like a women's workup, I would love to do a men's one. I know that one is gonna be harder, but hopefully, and I'm trying to work towards that happening. But yeah, I would love to. Okay, all right. Um, so just general um these are just kind of general photography questions related to you specifically mm -hmm. um and it's a lot of them are questions that i ask everybody just because i'd like to just hear everybody's responses to um again just very generic um photography questions so the first one is what do you love most about the photography process so that could be for example like actually taking the photos it could be um you know your interaction with the players um like delivering the photos and seeing them used on you know at the athletic or whatever the case is like do you have or what what do you love most about what you do as a photographer i feel like um I feel like the interaction of players taking the photos is like one of my favorite, but also having players talking about your picture, saying like, oh, I love this picture. I feel that's the most like gratifying, like that's just yeah. hit different because like, okay, you did something like that player like it. Um, so yeah, I feel like that part of like having someone say like, oh, this is my favorite photo. Oh, I love this photo. Like you capture the moment perfectly. I feel like yes. those are... It's, those are very nice but i love also the interaction of the with players and taking the photos i feel like those are also very special yes on the flip side what do you dislike about photography adding it i hate adding pictures i hate adding pictures <laughs> because like let's talk about a game like normally i i i got better with this and i learned better towards the game every single game is different but like when you have like a thousand photos for you to look oh my god <laughs> that kills me yeah like in the beginning like you're very excited you're like going through but like the last that's what kills me is the last like i don't know 200 photos like you're barely looking at it sometimes you miss something that's so good and then you look back and like look what i just did it i miss yeah. it because i I'm going so fast to get this done and I was so tired by the end of the day I like miss like some good photos. But like the editing process for me is just pain. I <laughs> you're not the only one. You're definitely not the only one. I um, still have to go through like all of the photos I took from the workup because like I didn't delete anything. I was just like selecting the moment like what I thought was the best. So I have games that have like five thousand photos that I haven't looked at all. Because really? Because I, mm -hmm. I don't want to delete it because I know it's gonna take forever for me to like pick the ones that I like, and deleting the same ones. 
and I'm like, I'm always like, I'm gonna do some. I'm gonna, it's just sitting on my driver right now, but I'm like, I gotta do it. <laughs> it's just like taking space that I need it. Yeah. But like, oh, it's just like a lot. <laughs> um, photos. Do you have a single favorite photo that you've taken? I know you've mentioned a few throughout the throughout the show. Uh, do you have a single one that you want to get blown up and put up on your wall someplace? I feel like that Christian Press photo for me is is always going to be my favorite one. I feel because it was the first one that I was like, wow, I did good. Like, this is this is good. It's like, I'm good at this. Yeah. I feel like that was the first moment and I was like, okay, okay, I can see it. That photo, I still want to, I want to blow up and then put it somewhere. I just nice. love the photo so much. Nice. Um, what's something that you wish you would have learned about photography earlier on? And I know it, it hasn't been that long that you've been shooting professionally, mm -hmm. but again, you go back three, four years ago, you've grown a lot. So like mm -hmm. when you started in 2020, is there something that you wish you would have known then that you know now? I feel like back then I was too worried about like what type of camera that I had instead of like focusing, focusing more on my settings and trying to work with what I had. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, if I, I advise I would be like, don't worry too much about what you're shooting with, more how you're shooting. Like the settings that you use, like make the best of it. Like you might not have the best equipment, but like if you know how to use it, you're going to take like some amazing pictures. And I've seen people do that before. And I've done it. Like, I have to like some pictures when like I didn't have any like sports ca camera or even like big lens. So I feel like I would say that I feel like I was too focused on like getting the best equipment instead of a work more towards what can I do best with my camera, like settings and what can work and won't work. So, yeah. Okay. okay. And we talked about the men's world cup which will be in the United States. I'm sure you would love to do the Women's World Cup again as well. But does Georgia have any bucket list things that she wants to shoot? Does she want to shoot uh, Coachella? Does she want to shoot the Olympics? Did, like, Is there anything that you want to do uh, that you haven't done yet? Yeah, I feel like Olympics would be like a goal, like main goal. Um, but... At least for this year, I'm trying and like I'm working myself to like shoot other sports because I know that will help me uh, shooting an Olympics one day. So more like trying to like expand uh, my portfolio going for other um, sports. So I'm like going through that. So but like goal would be like Olympics would be like amazing. That's like a dream. Yeah. Um. And last question, you kind of touched on it, and I don't know if it if it's going to be the same answer or not. Um, that young photographer, that young woman who reaches out to you on Instagram or by email or whatever the case is, um, what is the advice you would give her um, to get to where you've gotten to? I feel like just keep working, keep it just going. I know it's going to have like moments that are very hard that you want to try to give up and be like, oh, I'm not good at this. But like, I feel like practicing and shooting is going to take you there. Uh, always believe in your work, always believe in yourself and just go for it. Like work, 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 and just don't listen to like what people like have to say bad about what you're doing or like put any doubts in your head. I just feel like if you have that passion in you, you're going to get there. It might take a while, but like you're going to get there. I love it. I love it. Georgia, you're the best. Thank <laughs> you so much for your time. Um, I love talking to you. I love your perspective, uh, not just on photography, but on just life in general. Um, is there, I'll have your website and your Instagram, mm -hmm. all your social media uh, listed, but is there anything else? anybody should know uh or anything like that before we get out of here no i feel like that's it i guess thank you for having me though i really appreciate it yes absolutely again i i appreciate it so much um again i i've talked about it a bunch today just so accomplished in a short amount of time and um 
very humble. You know, it's like, not that, not that I thought otherwise, I don't want you to think that, but, um, you know, like I said, I reached out to you and you're like, oh my God, like, don't feel nervous to, you know, to ask or or anything like that. So I I truly appreciate you. Um, Obviously wish you nothing but the best. 2024 is going to be the best year yet. And I can't wait to see what else you have in store. Thank you. Thank you. And let me.